Okay, that was, that was superfluous. That was superfluous. Sit down. <laughs> superfluous. Did I say that? I know. See, see this dog on the key that she's so freaking brilliant. I was going to fight her last week about that. I practiced all the way from Temple Hill. And then she trying to tell me something else. And she's so doggone right. That's why I don't know how she married Brian. But her mother told me that if something were to go down between her and Brian, she's going with Brian. <laughs> Where's Mama? Where's Mama Maria? Is she here? Where's? Wave your hand. You still going with Brian? <laughs> she said, yes, sir. Um, did you all see uh, Pastor Rick's brother? Brother. Daughter? I was thinking about my brother, but wasn't that touching destiny? And I didn't know this, but do you recall the last part where he was standing in front of her? And, and she couldn't move, but she began to cry. She, she, they are instructed to not move until your family reached for you. Can you imagine what? Oh, man, I'm getting too soft in my old age. <laughs> Can you imagine wanting to hold you? See, that's my, that, my daughters do that to me. That Brittany, boy, psh. And, 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 and Rick, if I had known that, you don't have your baby waiting like that, man. Jack him up after service. Where? Uh, uh, Brother Cornell, can you confirm that? What is that for? Why do they do that? Laura, you say, oh, yeah. Uh, Lord Leslie. Logan. Lord Leslie. <laughs> this is Lord Leslie. Logan. Logan, you had to do the same thing? And, uh, and, and who stood before you at that time? Your whole family. And your whole family walks up to you? And you can't move? Uh, that's yes, sir, to you. <laughs> Y'all don't do that anymore? Let, let me explain something to you. Let me explain to you. The five-star general, the five-star general doesn't have the rank that I have. The president of the United States. You see what we got to teach our babies? That's why I had a redress when I stood up about, have you all greeted me before? A judge gets more respect than some pastors because the bailiff will say, and your butt better get out of it. I bet you Logan won't sit there and say he doesn't have the rank <laughs> or she's going to jail. You can be held in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. Dun, 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 dun. I don't care if Donald Trump 10 times, Joe Biden 15 times, Barack Obama 30 times come out that door. You stand up. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, as your pastor, get up. Give honor to whom honor is due. Yes, okay, now let's go all the way back, little Reg. Starting with your parents. Yes, they were supposed to get, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. See, that's what's happening to this lawless culture. I'll preach anything that ain't nailed down. And then you all, as a church, have the audacity to let the culture cater to what you do as believers. Thank you for this lesson, Logan. 
You, I can attribute this to you. This is wonderful. And I'm not jumping her because now I got to protect feelings and people's emotions and stuff like that, even with all you. Why pastor keeps doing that? That's why this place will never be like jam-packed running over until true believers, the remnant church, step up and come because I'm not going to cater mm, to your culture and now acquiesce or reduce the truth because most Christians can't handle the truth. Am I right, I say? And then I got to be this doggone mailman. I got to be the one that, that dispense this and disseminate the truth and be looked at as a know-it-all or who does he think he is. But I would like to go home and be regular. I would outdo every member or partner of Faith City Central. You say what you want to say. I would, just as a partner. And God called me the pastor. And there's people who want to do this. <laughs> Gennaro, do you understand what I'm saying, son? There should be an order that's exhibited and exude from this place that trumps any order in the earth. The kingdoms of our God shall trump the kingdoms of this world. We are citizens of the kingdom of God and unto the captain of our salvation, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. We salute thee and all of your orders as it relates to thee. So he gave some pastors. Why? For your edification, for your increase, and one of, if not the greatest person you should honor and reverence, which has left the church, Rhonda, is the pastor. Because there was a day when the pastor would come and people would warn each other, pass, pass, come, pass. Now, what up? Because you got so many of them that's bowing to culture. You hear me, Paul? That's bowing to, to culture. And not telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the Bible says we're in days... We're in the days where people will gather around teachers who are just telling them what they want to hear. And the great apostasy will begin. The falling away of even those who are considered the very elect. Bishop, it's so good to see you. Whereby even... Those who have relationship would be deceived, if possible. That's the level of deception is going to be released in the earth to get you off, to make me like an enemy. When I say me, I'm talking about the office of pastor. And to reduce me as mere man. Let me ask you a question. Okay, let me ask you a question. Why is it, Pastor Pete, us pastors going to have to give an account far greater than anyone else? Why is the requirement heightened? Why, why is it that the judgment when it comes to us going to be greater if we just the same. I mean, come on, put it together. And you want to reduce me here, but I get judged up here. 
What's up with that? Just do the math. Okay, just, just do the math. See, because I, I can view myself and turn down the volume. And I can't tell whether I'm fussing, arguing, angry, or passionate. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you're doing good. No, you're doing good, but I may not want this on the air. Just stay right there. Talk to me. Because you are never. What did I just say? Never. You are never to worship me. I get it. I get it. But some people heard worship and got turned off right away because their honor is not in place. And they would want to misconstrue that as being worship. And that's why I don't go there because then people worship him. No, I'm a, I do this. I want this badder than most of y'all wanted for yourself, and you don't even know. That's why tears and weeping and emotions and all kinds of things just go through me because of what I want. And I'm discovering I want this more than they, they wanted for themselves. And I get angry, and I had to learn somehow to detach myself from those feelings because it's easy for me to take my work home. You are my work in the Lord. And so when I don't see the fruit of the seed that I'm sowing on Sundays be manifested in your life, it affects me. It affects, it should affect the past. Okay, let's break it down to the level of children. That baby you got in your hand, you let something happen to that baby and see how your heart will be ripped. You let something happen to Logan while she was away. Y'all would have flipped the whole United States Army upside down. How'd you let this happen to my baby? If Jesus feels this way about you and he's giving you pastors after his heart, how do you expect for me to separate myself from your success and not care for you wholly? W-H-O. L-E-Y. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> I get her heart. You don't need a do-over right now with that. Just purpose in your heart. I, oh, y'all remember that. Y'all are good class. Y'all remember that. Just purpose in your heart. I will always honor my man of God. And then it gets so weird, it'll almost look like idolatry. My honor was so thick for Dr. Price. People say, you idolize that man. No, you confuse an honor for idolatry because I will never idolize another man. Glory to God. What is this? What's going on in this? Yes, sir. Give him that mic. I don't even know who you are. And, and, and I'm, I'm happy I don't know who you are because that could qualify you or disqualify you. Because some of y'all judge the messenger and forfeit the message. 
depending on who it comes out of, gives it justification or not. Say that one more time. Don't add anything to it. You are prophetically speaking about honor, and the Spirit of God is saying honor will unlock doors for you. Honor will unlock doors for me. Say that. Honor, honor will unlock, unlock doors for me. <clears throat> Shout this. And because, and because I'm my brother's keeper, I'm my brother's keeper. I'll, be I'll be bold enough to turn to them to, turn to, them. to, say, to say, go ahead. Y'all forgot what to say. Honor opens doors for you. You hear me, Sister Cheryl? There are some doors that you have not been able to get open because the lack of honor. And whether I get it not or not from you, to me is irrelevant and immaterial. <laughs> because I got this thing on lock so greatly. My honor towards authority. Forget just pastors. Authority. Because when the popo pull you over, here you go, here you go. Here go culture dictating to you. Uh, what did I do wrong, officer? Officer, what did I, what did I say? Speaking to the camera. You, 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 you want to go viral? You, you want to you, you go Instagram live? You want to thread? Whatever. You, you, you so conditioned by culture that God can't get your attention. And being complicit will sometimes get you home. But it's the complication that you throw back out to authority that have gotten a whole lot of boys killed. Now, you blaming the police officer. I don't care who you're going to blame when my boy dead. The police shouldn't have done what they did. Being complicit will get you up. Ooh, I know who this is for. This is for every last one of you who are in here. You know pastors saying all the time, I don't know who this is for. It's for everybody in here. Because either it's for you or for you for a later time to tell your children or for you at a later time to tell your community. It's for you. You get it. Hunt your neighbor and say, next time Popo pull you over, <laughs> see Pastor Mike's face on the... <laughs> Pastor Wayne, will you get me out of this? <laughs> because, I mean, when you look at it, honor was designed to, because of what Adam did in the garden, he set us so far back. Honor was designed to accelerate you and I into our next wealthy places. And most people don't get an understanding of that principle. I mean, really, when, even when you look at the Ten Commandments, it was the first commandment that had a promise that attached to it. That's how, God, that's how serious God is about it. I mean, this shouldn't just be in one area. You should honor your pastor, but you should honor your parents. You should honor your supervisor. You should honor the person that's beside you. Because honor are doors that will open increase and abundance in your life. And I'm telling you, I see a lot of people have allowed this culture, the culture that's in the world, come into the church of the living God. And we got to make sure somebody stand up and do what apostles are doing today to really teach you. And I, like, I love this because if he didn't teach you, he would be sending a message to me. He didn't love the people that was thinking like that. That lesson is designed to get your thinking, to change your thinking, to get you to another place in life. No, don't give it back to me now. 
<laughs> uh, is Connor uh, or Levi here? Any one of my grandsons? Come, come here, LJ, where are you? You in the balcony? I love you, LJ. You hear his voice? Do you, do you, do you love me? What did he say? Oh, they, they, they are all trained to say, yes, sir. But he's, he's, uh, he's yes, gee, I guess that's acceptable. Oh, y'all are too, oh, no. Who had him to say that? He's standing by himself? That's my Lord preaching. Where is he? See, y'all got, amen, amen. Um, Um, oh, Jesus, help me. Pastor Tim. I, I love uh, my son so dearly. Um, I'm fourth generation pastor. My great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, and I. As far as I can remember, my dad was born 1930. I was born 1960. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't, don't even, don't even go there. Josh was born 1990. You see what's happening there? Josh loves the number five. He just came up with five star, not even equating. Mm. What has become a desire in your heart with the oil mm, that's on your life. See, far before the foundations of the world, God, the scripture says, knew us. And he ordained us, set us aside, predestined certain things to be so. There are a lot of people, based upon choices and courses of their own decision, will take paths that are not in alignment with the order of God from what he saw from the beginning. I'm wondering what you are missing as it relates to the purpose and order of God for your life based upon preferences that you choose or chose on your own. How far are you out of the will of God concerning what he saw versus what you've been seeing? Because here's what I do know. And the reason why I stayed quiet so long, because I had to get permission Josh Freeman was supposed to be my successor. That boy was supposed to follow him. Him can still stay in place when daddy gets out of place. Now, I ain't picking on anybody because you got to be willing to do what God 
called you to do. He called you, but you ain't got to pick up. You do that all the time anyway. You ever had somebody, oh, no. Come on. I mean, you said that, that, thank God. Look, 180 percent. I thank God for identification. Uh, call ID. I can just say, I, whoo, thank God not to see that come. What gets me is the one that called God, hey, I'm going I'm, I'm to pastor. That's some of the ones I can't understand. You, you call God and say, you know, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's not that he forfeits a great life. And it doesn't mean that it's not to be. But my generation was supposed to point it out to them point out their destiny. Even by naming them, it was supposed to point them to their destiny. So every time he would hear his name, he would hear the call of God being called. That's why you can't get high one day and wake up and call your baby Mercedes. Or like that car and name him. Oh, Lord, I hope ain't no baby's name Mercedes. <laughs> but you can go to the Greek mythology, mythological, mythology gods, mythology gods. I'm trying to get out of there some kind of way. <laughs> Why is he setting me up like this today? I have no idea. But I ain't scared. Now, if you do not currently know your purpose, let me give you a portion of it, especially if you're a partner of this ministry. Your purpose is the vision of this ministry. Because people may ask you, what's, what's your purpose? Now, purpose is the essence and the extender of your life. People who don't understand purpose aren't as fulfilled as those who do. Is this making any sense to you? Shout, I must, I must follow, follow and embrace, and embrace purpose. purpose. Or else you will be a wandering generality instead of a meaningful specific. You'll wander through life. What am I supposed to do? Then when you get on your fourth boyfriend and your second girlfriend, no, the same person. Because when boys don't work out, now you're taking girls on because culture is embracing it and you kicked out the order of God. But the church ain't too far off being as confused as the world because you haven't really settled the fact whether you save or sin there because you vacillate so much. I'm just a sinner, mm, saved by grace. That's so dumb. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you ever let me hear you say that again. <laughs> Pastor Jerome and Tara are in the house. Stand up, son. My son has come home. Stand up, Tara. You got to stand. Yeah. Down in Charleston, South Carolina, pastoring now. Isn't that something? So he came out to hang out with the OG. I was about to say the old man, but the old man don't sound as smooth as OG. You know, you gotta keep your drip. You know, somebody go get the wet back, please. <laughs> Clean up on our sanctuary front. Whatever. Thank you for being here. And thank you, more importantly, for pouring into me Friday. I'll never forget it. Uh, while I'm at it, Bishop Walker is here in the house. Bishop Rodney, prophet, bishop, apostle, pope, teacher, prelate, 
of the Diocese of Waldorf, Maryland is here. Stay in, Bishop. Give him a great big round of applause. It's so good to see you. Wow. And this man, monthly, I can, I can go into, and we don't even talk as much as we should, but I, I, I got an invitation to come and minister. Is that right? I'm supposed to come minister. See, so I got an invitation to go minister at his ministry. But every month, this man honors. Well, guess what I do? Honor my man and woman of God, sowing into them, serving them, and submitting. I can throw it back to you, Pastor Wayne, because that's the title of your book. You should know something to say about those areas um, if I threw it back to you now, right? You throw it, you throw it, I'm, I'm always ready. I, I just don't like his arrogance. It's, it's, it's his arrogance. See, he come across so, so arrogant. I mean, just standing there smiling. Yeah. Go ahead. No, but you know some, you know some apostle, because you, you're talking about their purpose. Just, just if you do an observation, when people don't know their purpose, when people don't know their purpose, they always misbehave in life. And they would normally do things that they wouldn't do if they knew their purpose. And just because, watch this, just because others don't see your purpose don't mean you don't have one. And, and watch it. and just because you misbehaving right now don't mean you don't have a purpose. Because everybody was born on purpose with a purpose. Now, now watch this. David was out there taking care of sheep. That wasn't what he was designed to do. But at a particular time, it wasn't but a few sheep out there. But he was faithful wherever his father put him. And notice who was the one that rose up to be king. He was anointed to be king before he was the king. When you know your purpose, watch this. When you know your purpose, you won't be pulled off on the side of the road by the devil to keep you from the promises of God in your life. And, and, and culture is pulling, pulling on us so much now. Culture is pulling so much because the devil want to use culture to see if you really committed, watch this, to what we've been teaching as he is, so are we in his earth. Because the devil hear you saying that. But he want to know, are you committed to the confession that you've been making? So he get the culture to try to pull you over to see if you really believe that. Because if you really believe that and you put weight on that and you know what's in your future, you wouldn't even waste time being pulled over the side of the road by culture. Yeah. Or pulled over the side of the road by relationships that don't align themselves. Or pulled off the side of the road with employment that does not allow, uh, align itself. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Anything can be a detractor or a deflector to your purpose. What I love about Pastor Wayne, so, I mean, he flows, and we never, we never, like, like my lesson today, he, he's heard for the first time this morning, and we're about to teach it together. I don't know what he's going to say, and he knows a little of what I'm going to say, but he didn't know I was going to get over here because I didn't know I was be here myself today. But what was so powerful, and you witnessed it with your very eyes. I stopped Aaron Gums from moving on because I was going to say something, and then he gets up and says the exact same thing that I was about to say. Did you see me go turn and sit down? And then, uh, Pastor Deborah, give her a microphone, and then this is what she hears while she's over here. Man, you've been set up. Haunt your neighbor and say, God set you up today, God. <laughs> and all these parts had to come together to make this whole. And God's setting you up. That's why I approach every moment like it owes me something. Because, watch this, Logan. God knew you and I was going to have this exchange. God knew that. It was amazing. And see, that's why you don't get upset with anyone like Main man standing in the back. I still don't know who he is. He just jump up. I mean, does he have a license to minister? <laughs> he, 
he gets up, but it starts with uh, uh, Valerie. What's her name? Anita. I know Anita. That's a long way from Anita, isn't it? <laughs> but then we get over here, Pastor Wayne stands up, and Pastor Deborah just hands me this note, and I can't, I, you, 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 you tell them what the Lord told you. I told Apostle that this morning we were singing the song about legacy in our song. We were talking about, may this favor be upon you and upon your children and our family and their children. We were declaring it. We were singing it. We were all on one accord. And so the Spirit of God opened up this moment so that we would have the vehicle for that favor to be upon our family and our children. And as uh, Brother Sterling said, the access is honor. Brother who? Sterling. That was Sterling. 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 Perry. Sterling Perry. Oh, if I knew it was him, I would have <laughs> never let him talk. <laughs> so we sang about it, and then the Spirit of God created this moment so that the answer to what we were singing about would be drilled home to us. And if we don't begin to teach our babies honor, that is what's going on in our society today. No honor. I've never seen such lawlessness in all of my days. They found a girl's body in a dumpster just yesterday. They had to run down the dump truck because the dump truck made its delivery, made its pickup, picked up the dumpster with the body in it and threw it over in the trash and the police got a tip where they had to run the truck down and go through the trash to find the young girl's body. What kind of honor? What? And your children gets to choose whether they're going to honor? Your children. When honor is the vehicle that opened doors and caused generational preservation. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your children and their children. Are you playing with me? What are you doing up there? Whoa, boy, y'all supposed to pick that up. They probably, they probably had a drum beat. Boom! They told the, that, that thing should have echoed in the core of your frame. I heard it. Why didn't they hear it? Because they off. I need minstrels and psalmists who will stick with the word and the flow of the spirit. Because you know what I do know? They're going to want them checks. And let me not be in the rhythm. Oh, come on. I'm just loving me. I don't mean no harm. I, I wouldn't shade them like that openly. We got something to do here, man. We too, we too wear stuff on our shoulders too, on our sleeves. Where, 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 where are we wear it? I, um, uh, I just want to speak on the behalf of God to his people. Ladies and gentlemen, the favor of God, it rests upon this house. Amen. And you can come in here and bathe in it, but yet go home and trample upon it. And it's designed for you to embrace it here, dispense it at home, so it'll go through generation to generation to generation. The success of your house now rests upon you, especially you men of the homes. And for all my singles, 
You got to pick this thing up on your own right now by the relationship you have with the Spirit of God. And you have to bathe yourself in it as you have become wives in your singleness. Because you should say I do to myself before you say I do to anybody else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so subsequently you go into something that you committed to someone else, but you didn't never commit to yourself. You didn't purpose in your heart to be whole, complete, unique, and focused as a single. So this is your time right now. Single men, so single ladies, when you run into that dude, that guy, oh, that's that guy. Ooh, hey, Mike, that's that guy. When you run into him and there's no honor in him, you already know, oh, he fine, but he ain't it. <laughs> he got that bag. But now, if you want to exchange a bag for your future, So be it, but that was your choice. And some of these rascals, they'll sit in this ministry with you while they're trying to get on. They'll speak in tongues too? I didn't think they spoke in tongues. And you go for the okie doke while he's gone. For something entirely different. I was going to say fruit of the looms. <laughs> he's trying to smash. And that's your husband? And he's showing you blatant violation of honoring you. When you told him you wanted to keep your body to you and unto God until you got married. And he trying to smash. I, I'm preaching because I was one of them cats. I would, I would have blasted Dr. Didi back. I would have smashed. What? <laughs> Homegirl said, no. She should have got rid of me. But it was a lot of pressure coming from other angles too. You know, when she saw me, it's just pressure. <laughs> too, much, too much pressure. <laughs> if I'm 63 like this, imagine when I was 23. It was pressure. <laughs> He dapping me up there. My man, it's one player, no a player. Your game recognized game. <laughs> Woo! She shouldn't even say I do to me. And she found out why she shouldn't have said I do to me after she said I do. Because the next seven, eight, nine years was purity hell. But you saw the sign before you said, I do. Now, now, if you know it's God, back up off of it for a minute. Go ahead, main man. You know, I love you. I know the Lord told me you and my husband. I got to watch you for a season. Make sure some things right. But if you ever try to get my fruit of the looms again or the fruit, what they want, the looms or the fruit? <laughs> Mama, I don't normally talk like this, baby. I promise you. I, <laughs> she's sitting there looking at me, pastor, now pastor. That. <laughs> but I'm talking to some young girls that like, they need you to talk to them because the Bible says mm, the elder women in the church need to pull the younger woman to side and say, 
Now, baby, what happened to those days where you choose to honor who you want to honor? Because you got your butt whipped down the street before you got home from a neighbor and you begged them not to call Big Daddy. And they call anyway. I just want to let you know, I whooped your son tail. Today, don't you, you put, what, okay. And, and you won't go and beat up the neighbor because they were loving on your baby. We, we, we have gone so far off and we think we're better. We're smarter, but yet dumber. Now AI is next, so we're going to forget our brains. Subsequently, making it easier for the next generation. God, let me help you out with something. I don't know. I got to quit. I noticed that my hard work caused an easier life for my children. My hard work, Don, caused an easier life for my children. And they embraced the easier life but not the hard work, and it made them weaker. Yeah. You see how that works? Yeah. It made them weaker because they don't grind like the generation before. They embrace the goodness of my hard work and enjoy that, but it made them weaker because they didn't put the hard work with the easy life that we didn't combine with the hard work. Maybe, just maybe, if we had it easier, we wouldn't have grind so hard. Can I get any older gentlemen my age or fathers who are looking back at your generation now and saying, how did they get the air? We, we made it easy. And when we made it easy, they basked in that, but yet they became weaker. What are your grandchildren going to be like? So grandparents, you still have a good place. Don't think that you've been pushed out. Some of you grandparents need to go back and get your grandbabies because your baby missed it. Michael, you have to be there to understand that one. Watch this. Pastor Wayne, take it from here. Pastor Wayne, take it from here. Uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, oh. that has been set up here. It, it, it's amazing while, while, while he's talking, I'm just thinking about it. I mean, all these last month and last year, we've been talking about this agape and honor culture, right? And that's designed really to push you past the, the, your own thinking. Like, like can you imagine... Jesus told the disciples one time, they asked him, Lord, tell us the greatest uh, commandment of them all. And Jesus said, you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And he said, the second is like the first. Well, they only asked him for one. Jesus said, the second is like the first. And he said this, if you do these two, all the other ones you will keep. So that means, watch this, if you focus on this agape and, uh, this agape and honor culture, and bring that culture over into your mindset. And watch this. And operate that in every area of your life. You're going to see promotion like it never before. And you're going to rise above even some of the scriptures. Because some people, you don't even know some scriptures. There's some scriptures I don't even know this in the Bible. And then I find out months later that I've been living that all the time. And all I've been doing is focusing on this agape and focusing on this honor that's causing me to increase. My marriage increased because of agape and honor. My, my ministry, inside of ministry, it increased. My friendships, it increased because I focused on agape and honor. And I'm telling you, you are in the right place at the right time. And some of y'all are so consumed with the challenges, so consumed with problems, so consumed. And you got the, the teaching right there in front of you all. And if you would just embrace the teaching, I'm going to tell you, you're going to break through some of the challenges that you are facing right now, and they're going to drop off just like sweatless victory. You hear what I'm telling you? Your marriage, watch this. If you went home today 
and both of y'all decide that we're going to agape and honor each other. I'm telling you, your marriage will increase just like that. Your children's lifestyle now will increase because now they see mom and daddy doing something in the house that they've never seen before. And it's going to make an impact on their thinking. I told, I told little Cresswell, and, and uh, they, they stand over the, the house, and I told Cresswell, I said, you know Pastor Tim Bowman? He said, yeah, that's my daddy. I said, he cannot sing. He, they said, both of them had saying, don't you say that about my daddy. My daddy can sing. I said, have you heard him sing? He cannot sing. They said, yes, he can. I said, what songs he sing? And all of a sudden, they got to singing one after another after another. Well, I said, I couldn't even pull that out. I, I couldn't get them to say that daddy couldn't sing. You know why? Because he done told them time and time again that he could. I, I'm telling you, your children will be impacted by the things that you carry home from this minute. That's why I love Apostle, because he put it in little bags, you know, little sandwich bags where you can take them home and then open them up and then display this in your, own, in your homes when you get there. Look at your name and say, you better take your bag home. <laughs> you all have been a part of something today that uh, only Holy Spirit can orchestrate. Um, and uh, Brother Hightower, sometimes I look back and wonder where I missed it. And some of us have to <laughs> understand that you didn't necessarily have to miss it. You just set it up for, you know, an environment that you didn't know they were not going to get the whole story. See, see, our children can pick up pieces of our story and live, leave other pieces out. Uh, uh, Nia, did I get that right? Lord, I was leaning towards Nia. Uh, as hard as your mom and daddy have worked, they set up a lifestyle for you where you cannot just embrace the enjoyable pleasures of it, but the dignity of the hard work that went into it combined. Does that make sense? I heard one somebody said, one generation earns it, another generation enjoys it, and the next generation extinguishes it. I mean, I mean, just think about my own house, for instance. I did like all the work at my, my mama's house. Pastor Wayne, you didn't ever cut grass or anything, did you? Wash cars, what? I was out, I was out doing, you know, doing other stuff then. I, you know, I was busy. So, so, like, the yard work was my deal. The yard work, the, the washing of my father's cars, that kind of thing. My, my father would get in his car and almost had to touch to see if, I didn't take, take, if I've taken the windshield out. I mean, the sucker was so clean. It's like, wow. Because back in the day, you take some vinegar and some water and some newspaper. Y'all, y'all don't know, y'all don't. And that hard work, that hard work, that hard work, it paid off. Now I have car detailers, I have landscapers, I have housekeepers. <laughs> yeah, at the crib. That's what my children came up in. And they enjoyed mm, the hard work that I put in, but they didn't embrace the whole thing, not not all together like, I mean, they're all hard workers. I feel like I'm getting in trouble right now, like to a certain degree. I feel like the hole is being dug deeper and deeper. And they coming home today too. They coming home, to, you, you step back. Man, Doc Didi on the plane right now. Somebody mentioned a nightcap around here tonight. 
I don't know. Pastor Wayne, you teaching nightcap or something? Because <laughs> I, I ain't coming on no nightcap. My wife getting home at 6, and it started at 7. Psh, want somebody else. Hey, Deacon, Deacon anybody. <laughs> Will there be one? Sterling got a word. <laughs> what you doing at 7, Sterling? <laughs> Y'all get together and decide. Media department, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get it, but I know I am not. <laughs> Happened to go to the doctor this week. They took it like an x-ray of my heart. They said, oh, only thing that's wrong is look like you're missing Dee Dee. Dee Dee! Adrian! <laughs> okay, they... F <laughs> yeah, Dee Dee, Dee Dee was missing in there, you know, the Spelling was it. He said, you know somebody named Dee Dee? <laughs> you hear me, Bailey? Like your, your daddy and your mama. They're the best at it. They're good at what they do. They work hard. <laughs> All you babies in here, listen to me. Your parents have given so much. And, and you, you got to embrace the whole thing. Don't take a portion of it. Don't take a portion of what they have done to get you in these positions. Like, take all of it. Father, I... Uh, I release repentance in every home where we have missed it in so many ways. Fathers. Josh, come here, Josh. Come here, Josh. Come here, Josh. Yeah. Got to make sure my main man good. I know he's good. but Got to make sure he's good because where he works in ministry is the same place Joel Osteen works. Mm -hmm. Huh? That was on the cheek, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we kiss all the time. Yeah, yeah, you good. Anything you want to say though? And yeah, in the cheek. <laughs> What's the deal about the five though? Why do you like the five so much? Where did that come from? I know, but why the number five? You... Uh, five star studio. That's, that's how it started. That's, uh, that's how it started. Five for him. And, uh, then it kind of switched to um, people just would call me five. And people would call you five. Yep. And then, of course, you know. And fifth generation. They're not missing it. They're getting it. Yeah, they're getting it. You know they're getting it, right? In spite of how many tats he put on. You know, y'all y'all making a big deal out of little stuff. I, I, huh? I'm the example. You're the example here today. Hold your neck up. Hold your neck up. That, but this is a nice one right here, though. I'm a, Look at that, look at that. That's, hold on, hold on. <laughs> like I can put my neck. <laughs> That's where I'm going to hit you. And from now on, you, you come, come on. I'm going to hit you right in the mouth of that line. <laughs> That's the target. I know that. So we'll choke him out. Yeah, going back to work, man. No nightcap. Just been one of them days, people. Huh? Yeah. I hope you got something. Hey, Apostle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
you, you, I, I, I want to uh, mention this before we close. I, I, I remember the first time me and Lisa went to the Bahamas. And we was leaving the hotel, going to a restaurant, and the restaurant was across the street. We in the Bahamas. Oh, we were so glad we, we in the Bahamas. And I'm getting ready. To, I'm so focused on crossing the street. And I'm looking this way, no cars coming. And I'm getting ready to step out. And all of a sudden, she said, Dwayne, Dwayne. And I stepped back, and the cops just come by just like this. And I'm saying to myself, I almost got hit because I didn't embrace the work ethic, the thinking of that culture. Even though I was in that culture, I, I didn't embrace the thinking because I brought my old way of thinking over into this particular culture. And I'm looking, because we look left to right, they got to look from right to left. I'm seeing a lot of people in the body of Christ. You're in the kingdom, but you're trying to play the kingdom with your old kingdom rules. And I'm telling you, they, op they operate just the opposite. And I'm telling you, you want to make sure you grab a hold of this. God didn't just stop this, because I was looking for the lesson at 8 o'clock. I didn't even know. I'm saying, man, look at here. But the spirit of the living God is trying to set us up. And God needs to accelerate us. He needs to accelerate us. And those who would just embrace it. You embrace the work part. A lot of people want the wealth of it, but they don't want the work of it. Embrace both of them. And I'm telling you, God has something special on his mind that he want to release. And if he was to open up your eyes and allow you to see what he's already prearranged, some of us would just faint in our seats. That's how much God is in love with you and I. Because as he is, so are we in this earth. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Well, I really can't tell you what I want to tell you. But now, uh, If I could tell you what I want to tell you about what's happening around you. I've been approached by something that I have never, ever even imagined. I mean, it's exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think concerning this ministry. Whether you jump in and on this favor or not, it's going to continue to manifest. And what I was approached with, poof, ooh, I can't wait to tell you. I, I can't wait to tell you. And I think it would be like the last ditch effort for me to get your attention to know who you've been walking with all this time. If this one doesn't get you, I don't know what will. But years ago, I heard like the Abernathy's and the ja Jackson's and the John Lewis's talk about hanging out with Martin. And they said, we didn't even know we were making history by being with that man. Had we known, we would have, ooh, the disciples walked with a man and understood because he spoke to them about what their mission was supposed to be. And these 12, well, 11 men changed the world as we know it. So when it came to now pulling from the past to input some things or prioritize some things for my life, I knew how to walk with Dr. Price based upon some stories of even the Abernathy's. I began to walk with Dr. Price, and I said, history is being made, and I won't be one of those guys who would have to look up and say, I didn't even know what I was a part of. Oh, beloved, 
Don't you dare be one of those who look up one day and have to say, I didn't even know who the man was, and I was with him all the time. That ain't for me. It's all God stuff. You can minimize the office if you want to, but don't miss what God has placed before you. Prophet is sharing. What? What? Anything. Brother Rodney, anything that the Lord would have us to know. Give me a microphone. Okay, okay. Sharon stood. I want to hear from you first. So, Pastor Mike, at the time that we were singing the song, may his favor be upon you, and as I began to sing it in tongues, I knew that there was an opening, something that God wanted to do. I switched and I started to sing in English. He said, no, don't sing in English. I love when you sing in tongues to me. So this is in part preparation, is preparation. I saw Pastor Mike a couple of weeks ago, Apostle Mike, a couple of weeks ago, there was something coming. Some were prepared and some were not. I saw it was like 10 miles out, and I don't know what that, what that distance is. I've asked God what that distance is in terms of 10 miles and how, what it means supernaturally in terms of when it would actually hit. So both things are happening at the same time. We are preparing to enjoy but we're also preparing, preparing for what is to come. Mm. A close-up of what I saw. I saw people playing um, um, what do you call it when they, when they have the... They were playing pool. Some were playing pool in this one area and another was playing pool. Other people were trying to be prepared. So all of that is happening at the same time. And we can all be a part of what God's doing. If you would for reflect back on my objective, my objective was to prepare a success map for you so that every partner of this ministry would prosper. Ooh, we are all going up together. Yes, sir. About 20 minutes ago when you were talking, I heard the Spirit of God say that there are about 50 people between here and the Baltimore location that are that have business deals on the table and that it's not by chance that you are talking about honor and unlocking that which exists and he says if they get actively involved with what you and Pastor Dwayne are saying, those deals that they have on the table right now, that they've been having a challenge just getting the door open, he said that I will, I will unlock those deals over the next 30 days. And where it looked as if it would take a year to get it unlocked, I will do the work in 30 days. 
So if we would identify what that is and count the cost of what we need to release, God will do the work. Now we can worship together. I received that. Because I'm one of them ones that got a deal on the table. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Um, Friday night, there's a movie here. Right? Movie night, Friday night. It's, it's a movie that um, I'm personally responsible for selecting. I just saw the trailer now. I, I, I think it's straight fire. Uh, I'm bringing my girl out to the movies Friday. Uh, uh, will they provide popcorn here at this movie? Is it free popcorn? Free popcorn. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Drinks as well? Drinks as well? Hot dogs. Nachos. We got to make it a movie night. Okay, we'll figure out. We'll talk about Because now you're asking the ministry to pay for it and, and make it all free. Well, we roll like that now. Don't think we don't roll like that. But uh, come on out to the movie night with uh, me and my girl. None of the chairs recline. No one will come to your seat and take your order. Y'all bougie. If you're not following uh, Dede and I on all of these social media outlets, please do so. There's a lot of things we put out for you to understand. And to my main, main, main man, you know, my, my, my newest friend and uh, a man who holds a great weight in his own right and serve in the right-hand man's capacity uh, here at uh, Faith City Central. I'm, I'm honored to let you in on the fact that Elder Mario uh, Teller is celebrating his 60th birthday today. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Um, I went into my stash. That's the way I went into my stash early, and I, I'm pulling out all these fragrances, you know, a little uh, Clive Christian, a little Louis Vuitton, because I like that, that, uh, that uh, Omar, amen, how do you say it? Oh, it, it's an ooh, but I have another one that I gave him that's an ooh. What did I give him? It was who? No, it's, it's like a, it's like a, I gave him a burning rose too. I gave him four. I set four out and I said, okay, just pick two. <laughs> he picked his two. They bagged him up. They got him in the car. I said, oh, did you all get that uh, cologne left in the, in, the, in the thing? Did you bring it back out? They said, yeah, we got it right here, Pastor. I said, okay, good. And then I sit back in my seat and the Lord said, you little cheap rascal, why didn't you give them all four? You the same one talking about he that scattereth. <laughs> so when I got here to Brandon, why I told him, man, get them other two and give them to Mario. He coming there tomorrow. I knew the Lord was going to speak to you, man. I was trying to figure out how you going to give me two choices. <laughs> so happy birthday to you. Uh, Dr. D and them, they were in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, and they have a, a Compassion International uh, video before we split. We can ready to get out of here. Just, just, just take it easy. Uh, don't leave you yet. Let's honor the presence of the Lord, but we, we're leaving shortly. L let's see that video, and then... Uh, hey, guys, we'll we are here in Kenya, 
and on April the 14th is our Compassion Sunday. I wanted to be able to present to you what we're doing here to get you ready and prepared so you too can sponsor a child. Listen, your little seed will take care of so many major things in their life, right? I mean, we are here giving hope to so many children. You may not can come here, but God knows your support can support them in every area of their life. They come here in the way. They come here. You come you here in the way. Yourself, yourself right here in Kenya with your sponsor child. So, so you, get ready. You take care of a lot. Education, food, clothes. You help one child. One child helps so many other adults in their family and so many other kids. So we wanted to know with boots on the ground, 10 toes down, that what we were sending money to was getting there. And this trip has changed Dr. Didi's life. I promise you it has, but it's all because of your generosity towards others who are not as fortunate. Um, Man, God is so good. I think that's it. Oh, chapel. Of course, it's mandatory for all leaders to be here. When is that, Tuesday? April 9th. Okay. May his favor be upon you. A thousand generations. And your, and your family and your, and your children and, your, and their children and, your, and their children may, may his presence go, go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you settles it. So let it be written. So let it be done. Amen is I agree, Pastor. His favor rests upon my family and my family's family and their children and thousand generations. I receive. We break the curse of previous generations that can no longer infiltrate generations to come because the whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And it doesn't matter what you've been involved in, what you've been doing up to this point today. Purpose in your heart. Purpose in your heart. I will honor the Lord with my life. And he will see the fruit of it as I demonstrate it to those who I come in contact with. In Jesus' name. Hey fam, I'm Sanaya and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's service. I know you had an amazing encounter with God, but guess what? It does not have to stop there. If you want to receive salvation, find a church home, or even receive Apostle Mike and Dr. Dee Dee Freeman as your pastors, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. We would love to have you join us for one of our services in person so you can join us at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills location or 10 a.m. at our Brandywine in Baltimore location. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon and I pray that you have an amazing week.